Okay, folks, let's take a look at external range liquidity and internal range liquidity and the difference between the two and how we can utilize both. Okay, we have a old high back here. Okay, and we have an old area of consolidation or equilibrium. It's about halfway from the low up to this high. Price sweeps above this old high here. And that will be a form of external range liquidity because it's outside the range from this high and the low it's formed. So that was the range prior to the new breakout above this high seen here. So price at this point, we know we have the equilibrium down here. But more importantly, we have clean lows right below there. So we would look for a move that could potentially come down to that level okay and price starts to drop trading down now what it's doing is it's pulling back inside of all these up candles Okay, so once we clear an old high, we would expect some measure of retracement. And when the retracement occurs, what we're looking for is where is the most logical area for it to pull back down into. Now, if you look at this candle here, we have a previous up candle, rather large candle. Then we have this candle has a wick. So at one point, this candle opened, traded lower. So there was a pass through on the range between both of these candles in this area. So the delivery of price was on the up move here and then down on this one, even though it's an up close. It was offered twice all through that range. So at the top of this candle here, and it's and it's open on the next one, that's where I would expect to see a measure of short-term bounce. Okay, and price trades here stalls a little bit and goes right through it comes back retests that same level in here okay right in here and it ultimately comes down and clears out these equal lows now what i want you to look for is at this moment right here where is the next level of liquidity because we've already traded below this low here now in reference to the low here and the high up here which we now have to redefine as that high the stops below these lows in here would that be represented in the form of external range liquidity or internal range liquidity in the context from this high to this low it's internal range liquidity but from this low to this high it's external range liquidity because it's piercing it down here. In other words, we created a range from this low to this high. So we expect this range to be given up and run the stops out here. Once that's done, if we are going to go higher and bounce higher or trade higher, or even make a new high here, we don't ever know that, uh, we look for the areas of liquidity. So we know there's a uh, up candle here. So we can reference that low, the up candle, not the black one here, the up candle, that opening, I'm measuring that opening price and extending in time. And what else do you see on this chart? See this candle, it's wick, and this candle's wick. In between there, price was only delivered on the downside. So we have a fair value gap. So if we start to trade higher, we can expect to see the market want to reach up into that 106.50 level. If it trades through this green candle or up candle, it's going to want to reach up into the high of this candle, 114.55, and the low at 115.95. So we can use 115.90, 115.80. Or we could use uh, 
114.55 or 114.60. Any one of those levels would be a nice. But this would be what? From this high down to this new low. If we see, I'm referencing the lows over here that we're claiming out, not that I'm drawing it to anything. I'm extending out, keeping you mindful that's the range because we cleared out these lows with this new low. And now this high is the high. So the range that we're trading in now is this low and this high. So if we see price trade up, we would expect it to reach up into 106.25. If it gets through the up candle, we would be expecting it to trade up into this area here, closing that range. And then ultimately it could trade as high as this candle's low, 118.86. So we'll call it 118.85 to 118.90. Okay, so inside this range from this low to this high, we would be aiming for internal range liquidity. Price trades all the way up, right into the shaded area here, right there. Now, because we're looking at a monthly chart of the Japanese yen, we're going to drop down into a daily time frame, and we're going to see how those levels. I'm sorry, we're going to drop into a weekly chart. I'm going to show how these levels affected price action in the delivery. So we have that fair value gap a little bit more refined. You can see the wick over here and the wick right here. So we can adjust that and refine that a little bit more. So that way we can have the exact area at which price will look to fill in. It's only on this down candle price was delivered on the sell side. No upside has been offered until now. We're starting to see it. Okay. So. Every time the market creates a trading uh, range going lower, you want to mark off the previous high and the new low. And when price trades back up, you're trading inside that range. So if you trade short at a bearish order block, which is the last up candle, that's going to be a return to internal range liquidity. But you're going to be looking for external range liquidity to exit on, which is to stop below the low. Price runs down, hits that, that's where you would look to exit. Predominantly, my entries are internal range liquidity entries with exits at external range liquidity. In other words, I'm buying inside the range and selling it outside the range once it breaks it. If I am in sync with the marketplace and I know what direction it wants to go, and we're framing that based on the monthly chart here, so you're going to see the benefits of doing what I'm doing here. If I'm looking for it to go higher relative to the monthly chart, any time that the market comes down below a short-term low, I can be a buyer of that on short-term external range liquidity or buying up stops with the expectation that the range will continue going higher, seeking monthly internal range liquidity in the form of this fair value gap. And I'm probably confusing some of you that are listening very attentively I'm sure but the the point is once you understand on the higher time frame where the market wants to go you'll be able to frame your trade setups as we drop down into a daily okay so we can see the daily chart in here market creates a small area of institutional order flow comes down hits that same order block rallies through now watch what happens in the grand scheme of things in the monthly range we are trading every time we create a new high, higher, 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 here, and here, and here, each time, making a new high. That is a run on external range liquidity on this time frame, being the daily. But on the monthly chart, it's still internal range liquidity because you're just inside of a larger monthly range. When we understand where the monthly and the weekly are trying to trade to, when we look at daily setups like this, this creates the recipe, if you will, low resistance liquidity runs. Because you're trading in sync with the monthly, where the monthly will most likely want to see price go up into. So every time a run above an old high is expected, that's going to be framed as a low resistance liquidity run. Every time we see this, 
you can see how price reacts to it. Very little resistance on the part of price to get through these levels. Because it has an agenda, it wants to get to a specific price level relative to a higher time frame because the funds trade on the monthly and the weekly basis. So if we can keep that in context and frame our trades with this idea, we will always be able to classify a trade, whether it's a high resistance or a low resistance liquidity run. So if we drop down into a four hour chart, we can see the highs being ran out. Every high has very little difficulty getting through it because it's framed on low resistance liquidity runs based on the higher time frame monthly. You can't even see the range at which the monthly has that fair value gap in. This high is broken through, no problem. This high here, broken through, no problem. This high here, broken through, no problem. Now it's a small little consolidation, but ultimately it runs aggressively and it's going to reach for these highs here. I get questions so many times about how I know where the market's going to be reaching for, for specific buy stops when we do our live session. This is how I do it. I use the higher time frame, institutional order flow, to frame out where internal range liquidity is and where external range liquidity is. Where is the buy stops and what kind of stop or what kind of entry am I using and how does it align with the higher time frame? The market trades down clears out some stops in here gaps down below on the election closes in this range back down to a previous bullish order block rallies through and hits the old high over here all these highs are cleared out there and ultimately takes off and runs out another old high which we'll zoom out in a moment and see okay all through here and ultimately trades up into that monthly fair value gap. Once we cleared this high here and we cleared this high here, we came back and created a, um, a gap. We created a gap here, came down and closed in the gap, and then ultimately aggressively ran right up into that monthly fair value gap. So what I want you to look at is every single time the market all through here, every single time it gave a retracement, this is a four hour chart, so we're going to go down into a 15 minute chart and let's divide the days. Okay, and I want you to look at how price responds when it gives you a new range. Okay, you got a low here and a high. Price trades down into the previous order block. Where is external range liquidity? Here. So you're buying an internal, internal range liquidity with the expectation you're going to see price move to the outside. Of the range created by this little move here so that's your range you're trading in for the setup the exits here but do you collapse your entire trade no you're looking for the ranges to take out highs all these highs in here we get another rally and then retracement okay so it's the last down candle right before the up move price trades back down into it they populate more buys on that order block where's the external range liquidity at above this high here and over here it runs through it a small little consolidation we rally away comes back down into the down candle repopulate more buy orders what's it going to run for that monthly fair value gap look at the reaction once it gets up in there lots of profit taking lots of it right in here ultimately comes back and starts to trade a little bit higher i think it's uh indicative of probably seeing a little bit more uh uh, rally when we open up on Sunday. But going back even further, you can see every single time the market creates a nice impulse price swing. We have a nice impulse price swing here. Comes back down, bullish order block, external range liquidity, comes down and hits this order block again here, rallies through, comes back, consolidation, and eventually presses through, clearing out the external range liquidity here or the buy stops above the highs. The range that's created from this low up to this high, the down candle, retrades back into it here, rallies away. Now, all this is what you're going to have to sit in if you're a position trader. 
But ultimately, if you give it time, all it's going to do is it's going to return back to a previous order block here, like it did here, and recapitalize more buy orders because it's a long-term objective to get up to here. So they're going to have to buy some here, buy some more here, let some time go by, and then come back down to it again, buy more of it again, and one more time, and then ultimately it runs away because they have their position built, averaging in around 113.50 to 113.25 in that area. Many, many examples of low resistance li liquidity runs on the uh, dollar yen. We have a low price rallies up, comes back down. Previous order block run from this low to where external range liquidity buy stops runs above here. Same thing here. We have a low price runs away from this consolidation. Why am I not using this low, Michael? Because this is a consolidation in here. Price moves away from that, comes back down, hits the previous order block here, rallies away. What's it going to run for? External range liquidity here. Running up. Okay. You're looking to buy with internal range liquidity or at a bullish order block inside of a previous range and trying to take profit at an old high or above it while you're in sync with a higher time frame directional bias based on institutional order flow like we described earlier with the monthly ranges and looking for this fair value gap on the monthly chart. Because just like any other time frame, the market's going to want to efficiently deliver price. If there's no price uh, trading up in this fair value gap that's been uh, shown on the monthly chart that we have shaded up here in the, I guess it's like an orange red color, the, uh, they're going to want to drive price up to that level. So anytime they can create a new buying opportunity, they're going to Build more of a position on. We have a nice liquidity void in here. Price comes down, fills that in, aggressively runs away. The range here from this low up to this high comes back down, retrades back into the bullish order block. Buy on internal range liquidity or bullish order block with the expectation of unloading it at external range liquidity above the range high here. Price trades above it here. Many, many examples, almost two or three a week, where you can see the setups that offer us an opportunity. And even on a pair, I don't even like to trade the, the dollar yen. We have a range here from the low up to this high, trades back down to a previous bullish order block. You can buy here with the expectation of seeing a range expansion to exit on a external range liquidity or buy stop. Because we're looking for buys only, we're going to be looking for any type of impulse price swing up, then a retracement back down into a previous order block. If we don't see any ranges that create new buying opportunities, we can target lows. So you can go through the marketplace and find all of the swing lows and wait for price to trade through them on the downside. And when they do that, They're doing what? Picking up orders to accumulate new longs. Like you see here, right here. Right here. And the other time it's a rally away, comes back to the previous bullish order block, rallies away, comes back to the previous order block. Rallies down into a previous order block, more consolidation, takes the stops, and then runs above, clearing these equal highs out. I don't need to draw this one, it's already there. Equal lows, takes the stops, rallies away. So the, the type of trader you're going to be is going to be based on what you see easily in the charts. You're going to see either turtle soups, and you're going to be looking for buying of sell stops or selling of buy stops. Or you're going to be looking for a return back to fair value where you're looking to trade inside the range or buying internal range liquidity. And by framing the marketplace in either one of those two uh, disciplines, you'll have no problem going in and finding setups.